To a place where I felt at home Take me back to a day when we weren't alone Take me back to an age when the world felt small Way back before we blew it all Movements for African American settlement in Africa arose and faded in popularity. Many of them involving the colonies that would eventually combine to form Liberia, such as Maryland in Africa, Kentucky in Africa, Mississippi in Africa, and others. Martin Delany, an African American abolitionist and army officer, later backed a plot to bring African Americans to Liberia. However, by the end of the 19th century, it had faded due to a series of hoaxes and fraudulent acts linked to the movement. With Jamaican activist Marcus Garvey and his Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League, who promoted racial pride among African Americans in the United States and pushed for the repatriation of slave descendants to Liberia and Sierra Leone, the Back to African movement regained popularity. The movement disbanded by the end of the 1920s, but it influenced both the Nation of Islam and the Rastafari movement. The latter, led by a Jamaican who saw Ethiopian Emperor Haile Selassie I as a reincarnation of Jesus and Garvey as a patron saint, was able to establish a settlement in Shashamani, which still exists today and numbers over 200 people out of a city of 95,000. Ghana's connection with African Americans The link between Ghana and African Americans is not new. When Ghana became the first sub-Saharan African country to gain independence from a colonial power back in 1957, it became a source of inspiration for African Americans. Ghana's independence also boosted the Pan-African movement, which promotes unity among all African diaspora ethnic groups in order to gain political and economic power, among other reasons. Non-American members of Ghana's administration became skeptical of Nkrumah's principles as black American expatriates became involved in the government. They chastised immigrants for being handed high-ranking government positions upon their arrival in Ghana. This suspicion produced a great deal of friction between Ghanaians and African Americans in the administration. There was an assassination attempt on Krumah in 1962 because of the widespread suspicion. Tensions grew to the point where concerns about possible CIA infiltration, a severe economic downturn, and Krumah's apparent support for a petty bourgeoisie led to the National Liberation Council's 1966 military coup d'etat which not only publicly opposed Nkrumah, but also weakened the African-American expatriate community. The fact that Ghanaian slave exports to the Americas were so important between the 16th and 19th centuries, as journalist Lydia Paul Green reported in the New York Times, has prompted Ghana to try to entice descendants of enslaved Africans from the Americas to return to the country and make it their new home, though not all are of Ghanaian descent. Thousands of African Americans now live in Ghana for at least part of the year, according to Valerie Papaya Mann, president of the African American Association of Ghana. Ghana agreed to provide African Americans a special visa in 2005 to stimulate migration or at least visits, but it has not granted them dual citizenship. 14 years later, African-American author Jacqueline Woodson recounted her first visit to Ghana in the New York Times when she discovered a major marketing effort called Year of Return. Woodson expressed her desire to return to Ghana but not to leave there year-round. She is not African but African-American. She also questions if today's societal inequities in Ghana are the result of the same attitude that allowed blacks to sell other blacks to whites in the past. Martin Luther King Jr. visited Ghana to commemorate the country's defeat of colonialism, and Malcolm X and Maya Angelou worked in Ghana under Kwame Nkrumah's presidency. W.E.B. Dubois died as a Ghanaian citizen in Ghana 
And the W.E.B. Dubois Memorial Center for Pan-African Culture is now located in Accra. Marcus Garvey, a well-known Jamaican Pan-Africanist, campaigned for African Americans to return to Africa. He formed the Black Star Line to assist black people in returning to Africa, hence the Black Star on the Ghanaian flag and the national football team's name. Ghana's Plan Genealogy tourism, also known as root tourism, is part of the tourism business made up of visitors with family ties to their vacation destination. These genealogy travelers visit their ancestors' homelands in order to reconnect with their history and walk in their predecessors' footsteps. Genealogy tourism is a global industry. Africans in the Americas were inspired to journey to their ancestral African homelands. Cape Coast and Elmina in Ghana, Gori Island in Senegal, Jufure in Gambia, and Bahia in Brazil are all popular destinations. The promise for tourism development in Africa was recognized by African governments. Following the African American Summit in 1999, the biannual Pan-African Historical Theatre Festival, Emancipation Day celebrations, and Juneteenth, successive governments in Ghana have made attempts through the Ministry of Tourism to lure diaspora Africans to Ghana. Ghana's Year of Return campaign aimed to not only maintain but also deepen this relationship. The project is part of a bigger plan to reduce Ghana's reliance on aid by attracting African-American enterprise and investment, among other things. President Akufo Addo's development program, dubbed Ghana Beyond Aid, aims to attain self-sufficiency and break free from the reliance paradigm. Ghana, according to Akufo Addo, does not require foreign help. Rather, the African diaspora ought to return, create, and invest. His agenda was embraced by the United Nations Sustainable Development Partnership as part of its African development strategy. Ghana is in a good position to reduce its reliance on help. Ghana was awarded $1.25 billion in Official Development Assistance, or ODA, in 2017. In 2017, this amounted to only 2.1% of Ghana's $59 billion GDP. ODA refers to government assistance that supports and especially targets the economic growth and welfare of developing nations. It does not include military or anti-terrorism actions. Furthermore, Ghana has already attracted significant foreign investment. For example, French foreign direct investment in Ghana totaled $10.5 million in 2017 for a total stock of $1.7 billion and China would have started work on a $2 billion infrastructure project in Ghana. African Americans, on the other hand, will have programs tailored to their needs. The president announced the formation of Beyond the Return, the Diaspora Dividend, a multi-million dollar fund to solicit investment from members of the African diaspora as part of Ghana Beyond Aid. Special Diaspora Investment Programs, Sankofa Savings Accounts and Diaspora Housing Schemes will be part of it. The African diaspora will be able to invest in tourist infrastructure, agro-value addition, real estate, music, culture, and retirement homes, according to the Ministry of Finance. There is no language barrier for African Americans in Ghana, and the country has a transparent legal structure and economic environment, making it a safe and reliable investment location. Ghana is also the only country that under its right to abode statute grants people of African heritage the legal right to remain in the country indefinitely. Ghana removed a number of procedural impediments during the year of return, granting citizenship to 100 African Americans solely on the basis of their African ancestry. Barbara Otengyasi, Ghana's Minister of Tourism, exhorted African Americans to return home and make a life in Ghana at the memorial service for George Floyd. 
Ghana's seduction of African Americans has evolved from one of solidarity in the face of black persecution to one of business and investment. Ghana is hoping to attract investors who are interested in the country's development and some African Americans may benefit directly from the association. Some African Americans may accept Ghana's invitation because of accessible commercial prospects, a welcoming environment, and the chance to escape behind racism and police violence. And many African Americans have already accepted this invitation. Another reason African Americans are pouring into Ghana is because of Ghana's huge technological potential. Google in 2019 opened its first Africa Artificial Intelligence Lab in Ghana to provide developers with the necessary research needed to build products that can solve problems that Africa faces today. This is Google's first AI research lab in Africa and the first from any tech firm as far as we can tell, beating Apple, Facebook and Microsoft to the punch. It is truly amazing how Ghana has managed to attract so many African Americans to come to Ghana. These days, it is not uncommon to find high school students in the US who are applying to study in Ghana. Ghana also attracts the working class US citizens who want to seek new frontiers in their respective careers. The future of Africa is bright and there's no doubt that the bulk of that is going to come from Ghana.